Good morning. It is great to see you here today. The title of today's meditation is You Are Sacred. We're in the season of Pentecost, and especially just at the start of this season, we're talking about the Spirit of God coming upon us. And I want to read to you today from the uh, story of the Spirit coming upon Jesus. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, my Beloved, with you I am well pleased. A group of businessmen had been at a day-long meeting, which had gone quite a bit over time. They were rushing to the train station to catch the last commuter trains out to the suburbs and beyond. They were solely focused on getting to where they were going and not thinking about anyone or anything else. They rounded a corner and ran right into a stand that was selling fruit, knocking over some fruit. They kept going. When they got to the train platform, one of the businessmen realized what they had done and waved goodbye to the other men as they rushed down the platform. He returned to the scene of the fruit stand mishap to discover that the young man who operated the stand was on the ground picking up the fruit. He was blind. It was taking him some time to locate the fruit amidst the rushing crowds. The businessman helped him round up the wayward apples, bananas and oranges, and offered him $20 to pay for the damaged fruit. As he walked back through the station to wait for another train, the young man called after him, Hey, are you Jesus or something? The Gospel writer of Mark has a purpose in telling us the story of the baptism of Jesus by John. At the time of Jesus, there were a number of religious groups in Jewish society. We are familiar with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. There were also the Essenes, a monastic group which lived out in the desert, leading a simple life, waiting for the Messiah to return. It sounds like John the Baptist may have been one of them, or had lived with them for a time. There are the Qumrans, who are described in the Dead Sea Scrolls discovered in 1949. Perhaps there were others. These groups all had their followers. If we read between the lines of the Gospel story, we see that John's following was quite large and threatened to eclipse the following which Jesus was attracting. So this morning's story serves to tell the people that Jesus is the one whom the followers of John have been expecting. And this is done by showing that the sacredness of God fully dwells in Jesus. Earlier, John had said that someone is coming after him whose sandals he is unfit to untie. Now in the words we have come to know, a voice came from heaven and said, You are my son, my beloved, in whom I am well pleased. John, the disciples, those who met Jesus, the early church, and Christians down through the ages have recognized the sacred in Jesus. Today, Jesus isn't with us in the flesh, but it is a simple lesson which we teach our children. But has the profoundness of the human divine relationship in it. We teach our children, today we are Jesus' hands and feet. So I wonder if people see the sacred in us, if we see the sacred in others. And I also wonder if I see the sacred in others. Facebook is a wonderful way to connect us with our past. 
A young woman from my first parish connected with me back in the fall. Early in December, she wanted my address to send me a Christmas card. I replied that being in touch with her once again was enough for me, no card necessary. What better gift can there be than a friendship renewed? A couple of days before Christmas, a card came from her with sentiments that touched my heart. My only response to her was, you don't know how much I learned from you and your family and the many ways in which God reached out to me through your family. The sacred was shining through their lives. So I asked this woman, what would she like to say to a congregation? How could the sacredness in her shine through to us today? I also asked her what she would like me to say to introduce her. And she said, me, I'm just a girl who did the best I could with the cards dealt me. I'm a former heroin addict stripper, 15 years in the biz, who now fights for sex workers' rights and harm reduction. I'm on methadone, going on two years now in college for my social worker diploma and have made my life's mission to speak for all the women who cannot speak. I'm unapologetic and unashamed of my life, which has led me in ways I've never considered, but once there cannot imagine being anywhere else. And I've taken cats with emotional issues, five so far in the herd. I'm killing myself laughing that my words will be spoken in a meditation. That's irony on a level I never even thought of. This is what she would say to us. Wow, sermons haven't even been here in church for decades. Not your fault. I'm just more of a Buddhist leaning kind of girl these days. So what would I say? I think it would be more a get off your butt and practice what you preach attitude. It isn't enough to spout off. Actions speak volumes and words mean nothing. The ability to give without strings attached is the only way to help people. That and fighting for harm reduction is the only way to go. So help us lobby and educate. Do you see the sacredness in this? I wanted you to hear these words this morning because these words, which are so true to what Jesus taught, show that the sacredness of God is to be found in anyone and quite often in those whom we least expect. John saw the sacred in Jesus as Jesus came forward for baptism. I thought of this woman the other night when I was walking downtown and I saw a young woman standing on a street corner plying her trade. Most people were just walking past her, not seeing her, not seeing her as human. And I thought of some of the young women on the streets of our town, young women, daughters, some not quite adults, children of God, bearers of the sacred. Do we recognize the sacred in others? I come back to what we might call the competition between the followers of Jesus and the followers of John. Competition even in our closest relationships. I am better than her, or I am better than him. Sometimes, airs of superiority as we walk past the teenagers who huddle in the cold in a downtown doorway. Superiority as we see ourselves better than a sibling who has had a troubled life or a neighbor who is going through a rough patch, thinking that it's their fault, isn't it? Is it these attitudes which blind us to the sacred 
What would happen in our lives, in our world, if we could shift our sight to seeing the sacred, the presence of God in everyone? I wonder if my friend sees herself as being the bearer of the sacred. Do you see yourself as a bearer of God's sacredness? All of us, in many different ways, bear the sacred and speak the sacred through our lives as they are lived. What a difference it might make to our lives, our daily routines, our daily pressures and challenges, if we considered ourselves as vessels of God's sacredness. When the Bible says that we have all been created in God's image, maybe it's referring to this. And maybe we can't see the sacred in others if we don't recognize the sacred in ourselves. So often we get the wrong idea about sacred. We let things become sacred rather than seeing the sacred in people. Churches are a good place for this to happen. One congregation I knew made a sacred cow of its building. Nothing could be changed because people had donated this and that. Nothing could ever be thrown out. The ladies' parlor had become so sacred that only the ladies' group could meet there. Some of you might know of the type of place I'm speaking of. The ruggedness of John the Baptist shows us that sacredness is something other than things that we elevate to a divine level. Elton Brown, a United Church of Christ minister in the States, wrote, The water, the mud, the torn open sky, all go well with this rugged prophet John, whose dress and preaching style would hardly fit in most respectable pulpits today. This is an earthy story. Here is a reminder that the gospel is down to earth, grounded in the real, tactile, sensual, fleshy world. In these few verses are references to river water, clothing made from camels, diet from bugs, and tying shoes, a bird analogy, and an interesting weather phenomenon. Mark's earthiness gives us a hedge against faith and worship that are too ethereal, otherworldly, and abstract. In the midst of the coming days, may we remember that the sacredness of God is much closer to us and much more concrete than we quite often imagine. May we see and experience the sacredness in ourselves and in those whom we meet. Maybe there will some, be somebody who will come into our lives and will exclaim, Hey, are you Jesus or something? Amen. Thank you once again for joining me for today's meditation, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Until then, God bless.